people that have stupid amounts of wealth, what's the best way to become rich? <laughs> so I actually, there's this study I read. Again, most times I read a study, I'm just like, that's like, I don't believe the study or I'm like, it's like they, they make these subtle points. You know, like if, if you read any academic study, like usually they're just like making these very subtle interactions, like the, theoretical point that only the research you care about. But occasionally you read a, a, a sentence in a study that kind of blows your mind. And I was reading a study is from the entire universe of taxpayers, American taxpayers, and they analyzed who's in the top 0.1%. So it's people making uh, $1.5 million a year. So these are people approaching the level where you can actually just be happy with how much money you have. <laughs> and they said that the typical rich American is the owner of a regional business, such as an auto dealership or beverage distributor. And I read that. I'm just like, what? <laughs> like, who thinks of an auto dealer owner? Like auto dealers are just like these annoying, like people with greasy suits who try to sell us like things we don't need. You're not really thinking of them as like rich people. And then beverage distributor, I didn't even know what that was. Uh, and <laughs> it turns out that, uh, so like the, the, the likely, so there are a couple of points this. One is you have to own something to get rich by and large. So like if you look at the richest Americans, members of the top 0.1%, I think about 84% of them are making their money primarily by owning something, not by paying paid a salary. So there are some people who are just like get paid a ton of money. Superstar but lawyers by, by maybe or stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, occasionally, but usually it's people who are owning something. Uh, and then you want to have like some sort of a good, and then you want to go in a, a good field. So there are all these fields that are awful. Uh, they've done studies of the quickest field businesses like that go out of the, the business, the field where the business goes out of uh, business quickest. And like number one was record store. Uh, the average record store lasts 2.5 years. Uh, in comparison, the average dentist's office lasts 19.5 years. And basically the problem is everybody wants to own a record store. And there, there are all these movies made about record stores. Uh, like there've been a whole bunch of record store movies. I think probably every time some that movie comes out, everyone's like, I'm gonna quit my job and start a record store. And it's just like, not a good path and uh, like toy stores, an awful business, clothing stores, awful business. Uh, 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 so there's some other ones. And, but then there are things you basically want a local, you want a local monopoly where like, so auto dealerships there, they have like legal protections where you kind of have franchise rights to service a particular uh, car company in your local region. And that's a big advantage in business if you have legal protections about or against some random person coming in and stealing your business. And I think now, so I think you can't really read this, this that and say, okay, now I'll just start a local deal. I'll, I'll now I'll just start an auto dealership because the whole point of auto dealerships is you're not allowed to start a new one and compete with these these people. Uh, but uh, I think you want to be thinking that principle of like, what's my local monopoly that allows like that allows me to avoid someone just, you know, stealing my entire business or offering a lower price or, or anything. And even I talk about in the book that like independent creatives may be a better bet than I had thought uh, being kind of like what you're doing, like a podcast host or what I'm doing, a writer. And it's, there are like a surprise. I was surprised by how many people are, entering the top 1% or even the top 0.1% as independent creatives. It's still a long shot. Most people aren't, but it's not like as big a long shot as I thought. And I think the reason for that is you have a local monopoly. So like if Chris, if, you know, as you're building your brand, you build a fan base and then like everybody, I could be on, 20 different podcasts, well, your fans are going to listen to your podcast and watch. I, I, You can ask me the same questions. You could be like, someone else could be, you know, should I play with my pet or uh, have sex? And, and uh, the exact same questions, but you're going to have a, an edge because you've built a fan base. Uh, and similarly, you know, I've written some books and people, I already have like people who bought, liked Everybody Lies, my first book, and now they're going to give me kind of the benefit of the doubt and uh, don't trust your guts. You have, you do have this kind of a little bit of a moat as a, a creative uh, that, like, I think it's a better business than like pest control or something. Uh, <laughs> or you know, a record store. 
Yeah, yeah, well, record store, yeah, but like even even some boring businesses like pest control, the data says like basically nobody's getting rich from pest control businesses. And the problem with being in the pest control business is you don't, you're, there's no way to build a local monopoly. Like you're basically competing against everybody and everybody's just Googling for pest control and you have to, any profit you have, you're going to give away in, in ads on Google to try to get higher up on the list. Like nobody's like, you know, there's no name in pest control or there's no, there's no legal protection. Uh, I really nothing. like this- Seth's, Seth's pest control because of the personality that he brings when he's getting rid of my cockroaches. Yeah. Yeah, nobody, yeah, nobody, and, and like, you don't even have, have that many repeat customers anyway, so there's just, like, not, yeah, yeah, it's really hard to escape the perfect competition in that field, so, like, to escape perfect competition, you either need, like, a legal protection, a legal protection, like, auto dealerships have, you need, a, like, some sort of personal context, being, like, really deep in a field. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full, unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.